Hey guys, what's up? Brent Kelmer from Blue Water BST. Thanks for joining me today for the second in our series on Native Instruments Reactor's massive drum computer. Now in the first video, you'll recall that we went through a general overview of the ensemble and uh, described the various parts. In this one, we're going to dive into this top section and go through some of the more powerful parameters that uh, Massive has to offer. Now if you've downloaded this uh, tutorial ensemble and opened it in Reactor, you'll see that it opens with Snapper and it scrolls through these different snapshots uh, once it gets to to 92 for example we'll add in hats and 93 there's another another kind of stab sound I, I want to use this full version with with all the different elements but if I leave Snapper in there it will continue to cycle through all these different ones and then loop back and start with basically just the kick drum so I want uh, I want massive kind of in standalone mode the way I'm going to do that is to come down here to this button, which is now marked EXT. And I'm just going to uncheck this. And what that will do is tell Massive to, to not be looking outside for, for external control. In this case, Snapper was controlling it, or Massive was slave to Snapper. We're not going to be doing that. We'll use internal control, at least for the, the, the two or three parts to follow this one. So, following that, I'm going to come over and uncheck Snapper in the Panel Sets view, which is this third tab over, just so we can seal it and we get a little cleaner look here. Now, when you look at the top left-hand portion of the interface, what you'll see are these four different edit modes, all of which do something different. Draw, you can probably guess, is something that allows you to draw in lane uh, information. Now, to review, this top portion here is a modulation lane, which means that it doesn't produce sound. What it does is alter other sounds, other parameters within Massive. And the height of these bars indicates the intensity with which it will, it will modulate. There are three of these. So here in this bar, Mod 1, Mod 2, and Mod 3 all have separate modulation data that you can assign to all sorts of different parameters that we'll get into later on. But suffice it to say, this doesn't actually produce sound, but it functions in the same way as the sequencer tracks below that do produce sound. And each one of these produces a different sound. So if we listen to the full ensemble or the full sequence, here's what we hear. And we see that the the sample information is contained in the sample window here. We'll get into this further when we move down to the sequencer section, but just so you know enough to move forward for this tutorial, it's contained here and the timing and velocity data is contained in these sequencer lanes. So the most obvious example is to take, and I'm going to turn all the rest of these tracks off, which I can do just with this on off button that's below the, the, the level. Uh, knob here. It's just the kick drum. It's a 4-4 pattern, right? And you see that on each the first beat of each bar, it's hitting the same velocity. Now, if we wanted to draw in more of those, say we wanted to go nuts and just draw in a bunch of these with different velocities, that's what draw mode would be good for, right? So that we And then it's actually doing what we, we told it to do. I'm going to reset that that's what draw mode would be good for. But say for example we have a different pattern that we want to copy to a different lane. Say for example we want to take this hat pattern and copy it to this chord stab that's one lane above. That's what this copy function is for. So if we click on this copy and we come down here to this lane now click left click with your mouse and drag across to the right and as you do that you'll see that this this screen to the left of the edit mode display shows that it's now copied all of this data in this is now in the buffer or kind of a clipboard and now if we come over here after you've copied this is important if you go to paste and then come back down to the, to the destination lane you want click and drag what it's going to do is replicate that pattern with exactly the same velocity data and everything. So that's very helpful if you want to if you want to use a pattern that you already have in one sequencer track in another. And one thing you should know is that if the pattern that you copy is only, you know, two bars, it will loop over. So for example, if we 
wanted to copy just this section. And we just put that section in the buffer. And then we went to paste. It will copy that section and then it will start looping over. Right? It's a much different sound. Wow, that's kind of nice. Now there's one final edit mode that we haven't gone through, and that's the one at bottom here, which is remote. Let me turn this tooltip off. Remote allows you to use these copy and paste buttons and either MIDI keys on your keyboard or actual letter keys on your keyboard. So if I come to, I don't have a MIDI keyboard plugged in. So if I press the letter C and hold it down, you'll see that this illuminates. And then I click and drag across. It does the same thing that that other copy function does. And then if I come down to the next line and I press V, the paste uh, button illuminates. And again, I have my uh, paste function there. Why oh, this one didn't go down? That that's a different way of doing these same kind of functions. This lock allows you to. Oh, and the other thing is that a copy can be activated with uh, MIDI key 52 and paste with MIDI key 53. Lock is another function that 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 puts you in one and only one uh, step in the sequence. That's helpful if you want to kind of check to see how something sounds over time. You want to get it just right, and you don't want your cursor straying into another step and altering the velocity of some other step. So that's useful for that. So now you have an overview of these edit modes. Th these are actually pretty ha pretty handy uh, in terms of editing your patterns because sometimes you'll find that one pattern that you like in hats is actually being played on the snare, something like that. So now you know about that.